Hello and welcome to Some Grub with Mark Russell. Today we're doing something simple, roast chicken. So today we're going to be roasting a chicken and I'm going to be doing it the easy way. I'm going to just start by putting it in the microwave and then finishing it in the oven. So I'm going to be stuffing it as well. So take a look at the back I'm going to put things inside it and then all the flavors will go through into the, the chicken while in the microwave. Then I'll take everything out and I'll make the gravy and then I'm going to be roasting potatoes, sweet potatoes, and I'm going to be steaming gem squash and stuffing it with sweet corn and uh, topping it off with cheese in the end. Today, for budget limitations, I've only got frozen veggies, but I'm going to be eating these up as well because we deserve a healthy meal. But this will do for today. I'm terribly sorry if you're expecting everything to be fresh. Um, yeah, let's rustle up some grub. So first up we're going to get the chicken in the microwave. I have some regular chicken spice from the shop so I'm going to coat it generously around the outside, make sure all, especially all the skin has got seasoning. Then I'm going to put the two sprigs of rosemary into the chicken along with a heaps teaspoon of garlic. I'm then going to take two of these small onions and I'm going to cut them in half there's some seasoning that has fallen onto the cutting board. I'm going to use the halves of the onions to try and scrape up some of that salt. And then I will place them into the chicken. Once everything's in the chicken, I will bag it. I've got a giant cooking bag because I prefer much more space. And it's always a bit awkward if you have one that's too small and you can't get the chicken inside. So I you know, always go for the giant one. Once I've tied up the bag, I have to cut two holes into the plastic because otherwise the bag could explode. I'm then putting it in the microwave for 30 minutes at 800 watts. I've got a one sweet, one sweet potato and three potatoes that I'm going to peel. One gem squash. Now you cut the gem squash in half like so. Then I'll take a teaspoon and hollow out the pips. These are all going to go in one pot. I'm going to put a pot on the stove on a medium to high heat. I'm going to put boiling water in, about an inch or so of water. And then I'm going to cut the potatoes and sweet potato into eighths. So I'll cut it in half and then the halves into quarters. Once this is done, I will put the two gem squashes in and the reason why it's an inch deep is I want them to be steamed instead of boiled and then an inch deep means the potatoes should all get yeah, boiled sufficiently. This should take about 15 minutes. Once the water is boiling I will lower the temperature on the stove to about a medium heat. Then while I'm waiting I've got to get the sweet corn out the way for the, the gem squash. So I'm putting on olive oil and then throwing in a tin of uncreamed unsweetened sweet corn. Now I almost want these to caramelize so I'm, they're going to be on for quite a while. I'm going to stir regularly. I'm adding salt and pepper and I'm going to just leave it going for about 10 minutes. Also on medium to high heat. After 10 minutes, I'll take the sweet corn off the stove. So once the 30 minutes are up with the chicken in the microwave, I'll take them out. It should be very hot. And the reason why it's in the dish is if there are any holes or any breaks in the bag, the dish will catch all the juices, and which is very important in the roast chicken. So now I'm going to transfer the chicken while draining some of the juices out of the middle as they would be. I'm also taking the, the onions and, the, and um, the garlic out of it. I ended up leaving some of the, the rosemary in. But once it's all drained of juices as much as you, you think is possible, then 
I'm going to transfer the chicken onto a grill and I've preheated the oven to 180 degrees and on bake. I use I make use of a firmer fan, so I've got it on the firmer fan setting. You want your rack to be at a medium height. Um, you don't want it to be too high because then it will brown too quickly. I'm then going to slowly lift the bag and let the juices and the onions fall into the dish and let it cool off. After 15-20 minutes the potatoes and the gem scrub should be finished. You don't want the potatoes and the sweet potato to be overcooked. You just want them part cooked because we are going to now put a pot on the stove. Also with an inch layer, also uh, with oil about an inch deep and put it on medium to high heat. Preferably more towards the high heat. While I wait for the oil to warm up, I'm going to transfer two of the gem squash to a tray, set it aside. I'm then going to keep the potatoes close to the oil. Once, it's, once the oil is at temperature, I'm going to start dropping them in. It should sound something like this. Now you will have to turn these potatoes, you give it about 5 to 10 minutes per side. Once it starts going golden, I will give it a turn. While we wait, I'm going to start filling the gem squash along with the sweet corn that I have just revived a bit, because it is canned food. And you go be as generous as possible. And then I'm going to finish it off with a generous topping of grated Gouda cheese. Then after another few minutes I'm going to transfer them to a baking pan with roller towel to help soak up the oil. By now the chicken has been in the oven for about 20 minutes. I'm going to take the chicken out and give it a quick turn and put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes. The chicken juices I'm now warming up in a pot. I'm going to add two heap tablespoons of gravy powder and one teaspoon of cornstarch in about half a cup of water, boiling water. Then after another 20 minutes I'm going to turn the chicken again. This time I'm going to put the two gem squash or two halves of the gem squash onto the tray and cook the last 20 minutes in the oven. By now, things should be wrapping up. I've got the gravy going. Again, I'll do a separate video on how to cook the gravy. You, this is more of a touch and feel thing. Um, as it cooks, you can you know, see if it's thick or thin. If you, depends how you like your gravy. If you feel it's too dry, just add a splash of water. If you feel it's too runny, add more cornstarch. Um, as you can see, this, this is pretty much how I like it. And as it cools, it does thicken. So you want the gravy quite warm. So now the chicken's done. As you can see, the cheese is melted. Let's get this chicken carved. What I like to do first is, to, is make an incision down the middle just to make sure it is fully cooked. But I mean, there's no reason why it wouldn't be. And then I make my way around the chicken, finding all the joints. The joints are the best places to cut. And if a chicken's cooked properly, you barely have to use any force. I'm just finding the joints here, slowly cutting them apart and putting them in the baking tray. I also you know, definitely make sure I cut off the wishbone, which is there. And then the Pope's nose in my household is for the, the carver of the meat. So that's me. And then I'm just seeing whatever loose chicken I can get. On the back there's usually a lot of skin and fat if you like that. And let's get plating. 
A cook smear, not a chef smear. Followed by a breast. Nice and golden. And then the gem squash with the sweet corn and cheese. And then I'm just going to place the potatoes in and around. Followed by two onions from the gravy. Then topped off by my stir fry vegetables. And then a drizzle of gravy. Thanks very much for watching guys. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. Also, if you want to keep track of my content, please click the subscribe and the bell icon for notifications.